So I want to welcome everybody tonight to our um, SALT Talks. My name is Patty Schramm. I'm the Parent Resource Trainer Coordinator for the SALT Talks program. Um, just to let you know, we are recording tonight's session. Um, and just so, it, you know, this is like as normal, just for your own privacy, if you don't want to be recorded, just for your for video, you can turn your video off if you don't want to be recorded. Um, but we have, while the presenters are going on, we have several tonight. Please feel free to ask your questions in the chat box. If it's for a specific presenter, if someone else is presenting and it's for a specific presenter, um, go ahead and put that person's name and then your question um, in the chat box so everybody can see it because I'm sure everybody has the same questions, I find. If it's something you're thinking about, somebody else might have that same question. So I think I caught everybody that's on tonight. Um, we're talking about camp, summer camps. What's What are we going to do this summer? What is your child going to do this summer? Do you have a plan? Um, so we have a quite a variety of groups here tonight. Of course, I can't get every camp on, but I, I have six lined up here um, for some ideas. But I do have a catalog I'll show share at the end. Um, so we're going to start off with Marie Canada. Um, she is with the Good Works Farm. And if you look in the chat box, I tried to put um, the name of everybody's name in there so you have a reference to. So I'm going to turn it over to Marie and I have made you co-host so you can share your screen and you can go ahead whenever you're ready. All right, perfect. Thank you so much. Can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> well, good evening. My name is Marie Canada and I am the development coordinator for Good Works Farm. Uh, I just started three weeks ago. So if I do not know the answer to your question, I will make sure that I get that answer. So, uh, but feel free to ask any questions that you have in the chat or you can contact me afterwards and um, I'd be happy to try and answer them. Uh, but it is a mission that I'm very passionate about. So uh, let me tell you first a little bit about Good Works Farm. So our mission is to enthusiastically empower differently abled individuals to reach their fullest potential in supportive and meaningful environments. And so we actually got started in 2012, although we first started doing day camp in 2015. And we started with camp in <clears throat> using some land in Bellbrook without really having any of our own property or land. And then in 2019, Nancy Bernotitis, which is our executive director, she bought a farm in Waynesville. And since 2019, we've been running the day camps from the farm in Waynesville. <clears throat> and before I delve in too deeply, I wanted to show this video about camp.
Okay, so uh, the video just showed a few things that uh, that we do during summer camp. And I have a 10 year old son with autism and he has been able to go to our day camp over the last couple of years along with his two brothers. So that is something that we are proud to offer is that uh, we not only by the, the child or adult, with developmental disabilities to our camp, but we also invite their siblings. So uh, family and friends can volunteer to be a buddy. Normally we just have one, normally we just have one uh, week of day camp a year, but this is the first year that we are excited to be having two weeks of camp. So one week is our superhero themed camp. That's June 26th to the 30th. And then our other is Shark Week, which is July 17th, 17th to the 21st. And the time is between 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. And it's on the Good Works Farm in Waynesville. And we have a farm set up with um, goats and chickens and bunnies and a pig named Dolly. And that is one of the things of our is being able to interact with the animals and feed them and learn how to take care of them. So we also have camperships available. We accept the Ohio Medicaid waiver, uh, funds for community respite, county funds, grant funds, and of course, private pay as well. So as you can see in the video, we have several different activities going on. The campers are they are grouped into teams of about eight people per and they each get a t-shirt with different color corresponding to their group. And they have different rotating stations to where they get to be with the animals and learn how to take care of animals. And then they get, um, they go over to gardening, um, music, we have games and all of these stations are volunteer led. And some of, like I mentioned, some of the most popular and animals, but also working in and then we've also been able to invite some special guests to come with us to camp. And here are just a few more pictures of some of the activities that we do during camp. And see there's gardening and games, and I'm super impressed by the woodworking activities. Uh, Nancy's husband, Bob, kind of sets that up, and the things that they make are really incredible. So uh, it's not like any other camp that my boys have been to. So it's been, it, they, they've all just really loved the experience. And again, I think it's, it's just been so great to be able to take all the boys there to that camp. And uh, they've all had great experiences and each have loved something else differently. But there's always been something that each of them have really, really enjoyed doing. And these are just some examples of the special guests that we've had. Uh, we had a truck last year, um, and I can't remember where the dogs came from, but I remember my boys loved them. <laughs> I think that was their war. I think that was in 2021. Um, so this just gives you an idea of some of the special guests, that's we, guests that we've had. And we are also looking for volunteers. So um, there are lots of perks to being a volunteer. You get to work directly with the campers and you get to kind of hone your skill set. Um, we need volunteers for all sorts of different things to be activity leaders, group leaders, camper buddies, uh, help with registration, things like that. So again, our, the weeks of camp are June 26th to the 30th and July 17th to the 21st. And you can vol volunteer just for a couple of hours or you can volunteer all week. And then we have a couple of volunteer trainings to uh, help prepare them as well. So this is another video. I'm a little nervous to show it, <laughs> um, but uh, it, it's uh, here. Let me, I'll, you know what? I'm, I, don't know. I can probably pull it up. I have the presentation. I can, if you, if you want me to, if it's in the presentation, I should be able to pull it, it up if you want. Um, Let's let's just bypass it. It's just it's just a video of the because I'm just nervous that my internet connection will go out because I'm just going off of my phone. But um, it's it's basically just campers clapping, having fun, singing karaoke, um, just having the time of their lives. 
I'm not sure if I can. There we go. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, sorry, it's kind of, I'm a little scatterbrained right now just because of everything that's going on. But um, my boys have been able, again, like I said, my boys have been attending for the last couple of years and they've really had a great experience. It's open to campers ages five plus. I believe our oldest camper last year was 44. So it really enables people of all ages to just have a great time. So uh, I'm open for questions. If anybody has any questions or feel free to email us or go to I our think, website. I think there's one question out there for you. It says, can kids on waivers from Franklin County attend or only the county where Good Works Farm is located? Uh, that is a good question. Is Nancy here? Because I'm not positive. I will get, I'll, I will find out and I will get back to you. Um, Terry. So like can other, can other, um, other counties can participate then in general? Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're, we're in Warren County. So, and they, and yeah, we take the, the Warren County Developmental Disability Waiver so yeah i am i am almost positive that we do but i will check to make sure okay um you know it was terry that was on here so um if you can send me like if you get the information following the meeting um if you don't have it before we're done um you can send it to me and i can forward it to the um and, and um, Terry now. Nancy was here. Um, Nancy was here a minute ago. I don't see her now, but let me send her a quick text, and I'll put it in the chat if I um, find out. Okay. This is Carolyn from Good Works Farm too, and yes, we we do take all um, all counties in Ohio. We can't provide transportation for everyone, but um, we can. All counties are able to attend. It's um, yeah. So you know, contact for more individual information. Great. Thank you, Carolyn. Um, let's see. Is Marie, if you want to go ahead and unshare your screen. Well, there we go. Um, if you anyone thinks of another question for Marie or for Carmen, um, you can go ahead and put it in the um, chat box while we go on to the next presenter. Um, thank you again, Marie for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much. And again, sorry about all the trouble we've been, I've been having. That's, that's fine. We put a link. I think everybody should be able to see it, but we put a link in the chat box that takes you to our Google Salt Drive. And there, if you want to look at, relook at the presentation that Marie just gave, we have it uploaded there. Um, if you want to look at it, um, you know, reference it now or later. Okay. Next in the lineup, we have Carmen. If you want to go ahead and I can pull up the screens for, for your presentation. That'd be great, Patty. Thank you. Okay, sure. And then uh, somebody let me know if you see Marie get back on. Okay. All right, one second. Oh, I get. And then let's oh, see. Oh, there's the all hands in. Well, we yeah. can start there, Patty. That's great. Okay or however you want to do it. We can start yep. wherever you start me. So good evening, everyone. I'm Carmen Royer. I am the um, Transition Services Manager with the Greene County Board of DD. And I'm filling in for Kathy Kleiser tonight. She's taking a well-deserved vacation. So I hope I do this justice for her. Um, just want to share a little bit about what's happening in um, Greene County over the summer. Um, we can start with our all hands in um, group, and um, it's kind of our recreation group and our community based outing group, and they have a lot of great things going on every month. Um, they send out a newsletter um, on our mailing list, and um, as you can see, this is this is March's. Um, newsletter that Patty's sharing. We do have a Facebook page as well, all hands in dash uh, GCBDD, if you're interested. Um, they have a diner's club, they meet monthly for dinner. There's a Dungeons and Dragons group. 
Um, there's an, uh, gosh, they have an ice skating event coming up in April. So lots of great things um, to get out and do if you're interested. And Josh Walden. And that, oh, I'm sorry. And so, no, uh, Carmen, that's just not for Green County, right? It's open to everybody. Correct. I was, yes, that's what I was getting ready to say. Anyone can okay. come. Um, you do not have to live in Green County or be a Green County um, a board of DD um, eligible individual. It's open to the public. So, okay. Um, I have next, I have your summer use transition program. Yes. So, um, Green County Board partners with um, providers. We collaborate with them every summer to see who's interested in providing um, some summer programming for our transition age youth. This is at no cost to um, any individual who is eligible ages 14 through 21 for Green County Board of DD services. I believe this year we have seven providers who are interested in providing um, this for us. It is at no cost, I think I said. Um, and as you go down through this flyer, you can see um, all the specific information costs. Transportation depends um, upon the provider that's providing the service, and that can be worked out between the family and the provider. Um, this particular flyer gets mailed out to every family on our Green County Board of DD mailing list. So, and it will go home in book bags um, through the teachers at the schools. So if you haven't seen this yet, it should be coming. And I believe Carrie Keller, our um, eligibility coordinator is the one, her information should be at the bottom of that page. Yes. Yeah, right there. Yes. And then there's a phone number. Correct. And this is and for- Go ahead. You do not have to have an SSA uh, for this program. Um, if you do, you can reach out to your SSA and they can link you up. Um, if you do not have an SSA or are not receiving those services, um, we'll assign one temporarily for the summer to help navigate you through the summer programming. And then this one is for Green County residents or Correct. for eligible that are eligible for services. Okay. You must be um, eligible for services to utilize this. That's correct. Which all hands in the other one was, was not, it was like for whoever wants to attend, but correct. this, this specific is green yeah. County. Okay. So the all hands in is specifically community-based um, integration experiences. It's, it's for anyone. And so this is our save the date flyer. Um, for our summer youth boot camp work experience. We'll be holding it only the month of June this year. In the past, we've done June and July, but we find July, a lot of folks are taking vacations and stuff. So we're, we're holding it in June at Four Paws for Abilities. And then the um, Scott Family McDonald's always is great about um, providing opportunity for, for work opportunity for our students. So more information on that will be coming um, Kathy Kleiser and Cindy Shivadecker are the main contacts for this camp, and you'll see their information there. Um, you do not have to be Green County DD eligible yet, but seeking eligibility and or eligible. So um, more information will come out as far as boot camp. And again, this information will be mailed out to um, our mailing list, as well as we will send that home um, through the schools. And we are in every school system in Greene County, so you should receive this flyer. Okay, thank you, Carmen. Um, okay, so our next presenters are going to be, we're going to kind of um, change it just a tiny bit, but our next presenters are going to be from OOD. I see Rachel is has her um, video on. We have Aaron Immel and Aaron Crawford. Um, and I'm going to just turn it over to them. They can introduce themselves, where they're from, and talk about what OOD offers over the summer. Go ahead, one of you. you go ahead, Rachel. Awesome. Hi, um, I'm Rachel Spangler. I'm a vocational rehabilitation counselor in uh, Montgomery County. Um, and then I'll let the errands introduce themselves before I continue. I'm Erin Crawford. I am a counselor in Warren County. 
I'm Erin Emmel. I am also a VR counselor in Warren County. Awesome. So um, I we don't have a PowerPoint, so I'm just going to talk to you guys about um, summer youth. So I'm just going to introduce it, kind of talk about it a little bit. Um, so basically, what is summer youth? Um, it's a five week. Actually, it can be, um, I'll get to that in a second, but it can be two to five weeks. It's a paid work experience program that's provided to students uh, during the summer. Um, it's geared towards students who haven't had a job before, who maybe want some work experience before they find a job in the community. Um, so um, like I mentioned, it's it can be five weeks, but we do have different options. Um, so we have what's called level one, which level one is where it can be two to five weeks, and then it can be um, 10 to 12 hours a week. Um, so it can be two to five weeks, 10 to 12 hours a week, and then only one work site per that whole time. Um, and then level two is 18 to 20 hours a week for five weeks. So that's like the standard, like most of the ones we provide are five weeks. Um, and that can be offered at one or two different job sites. So we actually have a few in Montgomery County that are offering two different work sites. So the students will get like retail experience and then they'll get some experience working um, in a restaurant. So it gives a little bit of variety there. Um, this uh, summer youth program can be offered in a group setting or individualized. So group setting is typically going to be one to four students um, with one job coach and then individualized will just be a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I actually typically do a few one-on-ones every year just because I have some clients who, you know, their disabilities are a little too severe or complex where they wouldn't do good in a group setting, but they still need that work experience. So we usually have at least one or two vendors who can offer that. So that works out really well for those individuals. Um, and like I mentioned, it is paid. So students are paid um, minimum wage. They're giving it, given a vocational training stipend. Um, so they are paid for their time. Um, Typically in um, Montgomery County, what I've seen the most is we have a lot of retail settings um, for summer youth. We have restaurants. Um, a few times we've had some outdoor sites, like I've seen some like golf courses, parks, things like that. So they try to offer a variety um, of different work sites. You know, that way students can choose like which ones they might be most interested in. Um, and um, you know, it's, I've been doing summer youth. I've had a transition caseload for about four years now. So I've done this a few summers and it's just, it's really good for the students. They always are really excited to get paid, to do some work. Um, and last summer I actually had a client who was doing a summer work experience and he was hired at the place he was doing it his second week out of a five week experience. So that was really cool because he was like doing so well. They're like, you know, we definitely want to hire you. Um, so that's um, pretty much kind of an overview of summer youth, and I will pass it over to Erin. Thanks, Rachel. Um, I am going to share just a little bit more kind of some helpful information to know um, about our summer youth um, experiences. So number one is that it's so important for our students to get an ID. Um, before they participate, they have to have an ID before they can start the program. So that's something that's good to get started on as soon as possible. Um, our goal is to have students participate in one of these summer youth work experiences, and then maybe the next summer move on to a part-time job. So the summer youth really gives them a good place to practice those work skills um, so that then the next year they're ready to enter into a part-time job in the community. Um, the last time that a student could participate would be the summer after they accept their diploma. Um, so that is an option. If they are accepting their diploma, they can still participate the summer after, but that would kind of be their last opportunity to do so. Um, the only hang up with that is if the student is participating in Project Search for the upcoming year, we typically can't provide the summer youth um, the summer prior to Project Search. Um, Transportation is something that we can discuss um, on an individual basis. Our preferred option, of course, is to have the family provide transportation, but it is something that we can talk about with using public transportation, um, or if we need to, we can assist with some transportation as well. Um, we typically ask to get the referrals in, you know, as soon as possible. So um, 
as crazy as it sounds, sometimes we want those even before the winter holidays so that we can go ahead and start doing some of the paperwork on our end. Um, so for this year, we're a little bit more limited on spots. We might not have any left for this summer, um, but keep us in mind. And like we said, it is a paid work experience. So it's a really great opportunity for students to um, get that first job under their belt. I'll kick it to Erin number two. Oh, Erin number two. I've never been called Erin number two, but I, I guess I like it. Um, thank you, ladies. I am talking about the benefits of summer youth work experience real quick. Um, I just have a list here, so I'm going to read them off. Uh, first of all, one of the things I tell the families and the, the individuals I work with is the benefit is a scheduled start and end date for your work experience. So session one starts in June, session two starts in July. That's really good for planning in the summer if you have camps, if you have vacations, um, as opposed to getting a part-time job which would last the entire summer and then you know, ongoing after that, um, you would be able to plan your vacations and your camps around summer youth. The second thing is employer sites are already established. So students don't have to go through the process of applying for a summer job. Why would that be important? Once students apply and accept an actual summer job, they're subject to the employer's scheduling needs and they'll be required to kind of navigate that employer employee relationship. And being kind of the newcomer on the job, you're gonna get kind of stuck with those schedules that aren't ideal. And um, the summer youth work experience just gives students an ability to focus on the work skills and the soft skills that they need to start developing in order to prepare for that first job. Um, so it's really kind of a nice way to dip your toe in as a student who's you know really interested in work, but kind of not ready for all that complicated dealing with the supervisors and, and coworkers in that way. Um, the third point is, according to research, students benefit greatly from having at least two paid work experiences during high school. So this is kind of an opportunity for the first one. And the good news is that students who do participate in at least two paid work experiences are five times more likely to be successfully employed after they accept their diploma and to be successful in post-secondary education if that's the path that they decide to go. Um, the work experience includes the support of a job coach. Like we said before, it can either be one to one uh, ratio or a one to four ratio. And you know this is awesome because that is provided throughout the entire um, summer youth work experience. With a, with a non-permanent job, with a part-time job, we would provide coaching for a time, but it is time limited. So um, just another benefit is that that coach who's available the entire time. Students are able to make mistakes during their summer youth work experience and mistakes are actually expected and they're corrected by the coaches. Um, they're provided instruction in the areas of work skills and soft skills. So it's really a safe place to kind of work out the kinks. Um, an assessment is provided at the end of the summer youth work experience that can be shared with the entire team working with the student. So that can be really helpful with uh, making recommendations for next steps, potentially moving on to get a part-time job. Um, they can share information regarding, you know, the, the types of supports that worked during the summer youth work experience. And it just really helps with that continuity and, um, you know, the growth over the years uh, as students participate in um, work, the world of work. And then lastly, students have the opportunity to try out an entry level in demand job just to help them determine what their strengths are, what their challenges are, and their preferences. You know, many times people say, oh my gosh, I was, I worked at a garden center and I realized I hate being hot and I hate bees, you know, and I, I don't want to be outside. They completed the job, the work experience, but, you know, they found out something really valuable and that was 
they don't like the bugs and they don't like the heat. So, you know, that's valuable information. So it's really helpful when trying to determine a viable vocational goal. So that's kind of some of what I have. There's certainly more benefits, but I just wanted to give you guys an idea. Any questions for any of us? Could um, each one of you, I mean, could you put your contact or information in the chat box or an email in case someone has a question um, either at a later time um, about OOD and some of their programs? And we did share your um, links that you had provided earlier. I forget. I think it was Aaron Crawford, I think, sent me some of the links earlier. So they're in the chat um, box as well. All right. Do you have anything else before I move on to the next? I don't think so. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Well, thank you. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions regarding OOD and the camp, thank you, Rachel and Aaron and Aaron, <laughs> Aaron C and Aaron I <laughs> uh, for providing all that information. Um, the next group we're going to hear from, we have Taylor Frank and I'm looking for her, Eliza. Um, uh, Bush, we're going to switch up. This is Capernaum. <laughs> so I think I made you both co-hosts because I know you said about uh, you have a presentation and showing a video. Just when you share your screen, click those little, there's two boxes in the lower left um, if you share your video so they can hear it, so we can hear it. Yeah, we have a presentation. Um, there's not a video in it, so we should be okay. able to go with that. Um, so like Patty said, I'm Taylor. Um, I'm going to share kind of the first um, part of our presentation and then Eliza will take over after me and um, we'll take it from there. If anybody has any questions, just let us know. We'll have at the end some contact information. Um, but Eliza and I are both volunteer leaders for an organization called Young Life Capernaum. So Young Life is an international organization. It's faith-based, um, specifically Christianity-based. Um, but it has um, different um, branches of the organization, um, some for typical developing high schoolers, um, specifically Eliza and I work um, and lead um, in the Capernaum branch. So for students with disabilities, um, we uh, just a background of what kind of Capernaum in a whole looks like is that we have weekly events. Um, and where we um, play games, um, we hang out, we'll eat meals together. Um, we really focus on friendships and relationships um, with our us leaders, with our students, but also the individuals with each other. Um, and we service students from um, middle school to 22 can come to our weekly events. Um, and those events take place uh, in the communities that students are from. So um, I work with what's called GMV Capernaum South. So Young Life Nationally has named us in our area. So it, those things, um, kind of the titles are hard to suss out who goes where. But at the end of this presentation, we have like what schools correlate to what Capernaum clubs and who you could contact for that. So like for me, I work with students from Lakota East and Lakota West, Fairfield, Hamilton, Talawanda, Ross, um, and New Miami and Harrison. So that's kind of like a widespread area, but we uh, typically Young Life, they just function in a high school, like one high school um, and focus on that. But since we are servicing a population that is smaller in each separate high school, we service students in a wider uh, span through a group of high schools together. Um, so our, yeah, our weekly, we have weekly events um, and students don't have to attend our weekly events to come to summer camp, but we would like to meet the student and their parents. We, I recently had a student her mom reached out um, asking about camp specifically. And then I let her know about the events that we have weekly. And she started coming to those events and is coming to summer camp with us this summer. So it doesn't have to be exclusively students that we see weekly and come to our events, but we do like to get to know students before they come. 
um, so then we can best support them and serve them. Um, I think that's all I have for my part, Eliza, if you want to talk about camp, and, well, leaders and camp. Sorry, I wasn't moving the You're slide. good. You're I also just went totally rogue. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah, so my name is Eliza. Um, I'm, like Taylor said, I'm a volunteer leader um, for Young Life Capernaum. Um, a little bit about Capernaum leaders. So, um, or young life leaders in general are uh, college age or older individuals who have volunteered their time um, to invest in the lives of young adults. Um, and so, yeah, Taylor has been leading for a while, has a lot of experience. I'm kind of new to all of this, but um, yeah, so we have a great time and um, it is as enriching and, and growing for us as it is for our friends. I know that for sure. Um, oh no, it won't let me move. Okay, there we go. Um, so every summer, um, we have a five day, um, all inclusive summer camp experience, um, for students with disabilities, um, age 14 to 22 or, um, middle school to 22. Um, and Capernaum camp is an opportunity for, students to experience um, adventure and um, to grow friendships among themselves and um, with their young life leaders. Um, and then um, it is also a safe space for them to hear the, the gospel of Jesus Christ, um, to ask questions in an environment that um, is safe and that uh, welcomes questions um, and will provide honesty with them. Um, so at camp, um, students, my favorite part of camp is watching my friends have like once in a lifetime opportunities. Um, students of all abilities can participate in, um, outdoor adventures, like zip lining and go-karting, uh, um, swimming. There's a lake, water slides. Um, last summer, one of my friends who is in a wheelchair was able to ride the zip line for the first time um and it was so exciting for her um and it was very safe everyone was trained um on how to best go about that um but i have some basic information um about camp so this summer we're going um just me and taylor are um to groups are going um, from June 12th to 16th in other areas. Um, they have different dates and we'll be going to a different camp. Um, but we will be going to Carolina Point, which is in Brevard, North Carolina, which is about a six to seven hour drive. Um, we take a charter bus to get there. Um, and that is included in the cost, which is um, 715. Um, we also have campership um, scholarships available. A lot of our families use um, the waiver. Um, and I'll I'll put the registration link in the chat, which has some more information um, and obviously a way to sign up. And then here's some contact information. Um, so each area has um, the schools or cities that it includes. Um, and then the name of the primary contact in an email that you can reach them at. So I'll leave this up for a little bit um, and you can take a picture of it or copy it down if you have any more questions. But um, yeah, you can also ask any questions you guys might have now. Um, so um, yeah. I wanted to add something that's super cool is so I did Young Life when I was in high school at Harrison High School, like typical Young Life. And I went to camp. Um, something that's really cool is the same camp that typical high schoolers go to is the same camp that our kids, our friends with disabilities go to, um, Carolina point was specifically made for, with Capernaum camping in mind. So the camp functions so well, like the thought, like I'm a special ed major and I learned about universal design in, um, college and the fact that the camp, when you go to the camp, it doesn't look any different than any other Young Life camp that is across our nation. Um, so it's super cool to me that typical high schoolers go to Carolina Point and have their week of camp there, but so do our friends. And Carolina Point has worked really hard to make it so our friends get the same experience that 
another high schooler would get going to camp just in a way that best benefits them. Um, so they we do do some things different in our week of camp, but it isn't anything that takes away. It only adds to the support and the um, just the safety and fun for our friends um, while we're there. Yeah, um, I saw a question in the chat earlier about camp opportunities for um, students in wheelchairs and specifically um, that have like medical needs, individual medical needs. Um, and so if you have specific questions about that, camp is definitely a safe place um, for them to be. And they have um, tons of resources. Everything is wheelchair accessible, um, including the, the outdoor activities. Um, and then we also have um, opportunities like you can be an adult guest at camp um, and stay on property to care for your um, child or send someone who um, is able to do that as well. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you can reach out with with specific questions or ask them now um, about that. Yeah, Eliza's group took two students last year with uh, that use wheelchairs and um, it was fun, safe, and um, they were able to get all their needs met just like any other student that went with us. Yeah, I think that's all we have unless people have specific questions for us now or um, they can ask them in chat or we can answer them at the end. Um, is there, yeah, we have a little bit. I just wanted to um, check, double check the time, but for, I see it's Southwest Ohio. Is there any, I know a couple years ago they were working on one in Dayton is, or is there any other, any in the North, probably Northwest or? I can reach out to somebody and I can get that information to you, Patty. These okay. are the ones just like in locally in Cincinnati, how um, that we kind of interact with their other leaders that I know of, but I can read out, reach out to Abby Reagan for Eastern Cincinnati is on Young Life staff. And so is Corbin Moreland. They get paid through Young Life um, to like help um, get Capernaum Club started and different things. So I can read a, reach out to Abby and look around the Dayton area and see, I know they have Young Life up there. Capernaum is kind of like a branch that's still getting more out and out and out and getting more clubs. Um, so I can reach out to her and I can let you know that information, Patty, and then you can get that out to people. Okay. That would be great. And I think I have, I think I saw what Franklin County. Um, so that'd be closer to like the Columbus area, I believe. There is, there is some Capernaum and Columbus. If people are looking specifically, if you just go to Young Life's um, website, um, you can look up like where Capernaum clubs or Young Life clubs are. Um, but I can get you, I know the like staff person in Columbus, okay. his like name. So I can get you that contact too. I just don't have it like right on me, but I can get that to you, Patty. And if you want to send that out. Yeah, that would be great. And can you, <clears throat> sorry, can you put the website link in the chat box? Yes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen because I okay. don't know how to get there. Okay. <laughs> there you go. All okay. right. Here's the link. All right. Very good. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Um, and then, so if anybody has any questions, um, you know, you'll be able to look up the website here. We had the presentation that they had is out in that Google Salt Drive. Um, but you had their emails, I believe, on that presentation at the end. You have the emails that you can also reach out to them, too, if you think of any questions, that, you know, following these presentations. Thank um, you. Yeah, thank you. I know our son loved them. <laughs> yeah, we so. love them, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> He had a great time. He came home singing every. <laughs> yeah. Josh was so fun to have at camp. Yeah. That was <laughs> Josh and I were right at the end. Once I started leading, he, he started aging out. So yeah, I got, we got one summer that we were there together, but yeah. Yeah. They, they have a blast. So if you have an opportunity to check it out, um, the kids have a blast at that. It's a fun, fun, fun week. So yeah. I think the next person, um, and again, feel free, anybody that's on here, put your questions in the chat box as we're going through. Maybe if it's to a specific uh, specific speaker, you can just put their name and um, your question. So the next one we have, we have Andrea Harker. She's from the Montgomery County Board of DD, and she's going to share a little bit about um, their programs. 
Thank you, Patty. Welcome, everybody. Again, my name is Andrea Harker. I'm the School to Work Employment Specialist for Montgomery County Board of DDS. And just a, a real brief recap or just some information, uh, this is going to be the 10th year that Montgomery County Board of DDS will be putting on a summer career experience camp. Um, we started this back in 2013 with uh, the Employment First Initiative. So this is year 10. Minus one year, we had, did have to do everything virtually the summer of COVID, but we're back now and we're doing great. Um, I am going to share um, just something from our website. Uh, give me just a second here if I can find it. Okay, hopefully everybody can see this here. Um, okay, well, now I can't, now, okay. Here we go. First of all, the reason I'm sharing everything about our summer camp opportunities on our website tonight is I am still awaiting approval for the actual flyer and the application uh, that has to go through certain channels. And we've had some people out uh, for a couple of weeks due to vacation. So I'm hoping to get uh, everything approved uh, so I can roll camp information out as far as the application dates. So what I'm showing to you right now is going to be on our website from camp last year. So as you can see about career exploration boot camp, and um, the, what we're going to be doing camp is completing interest inventories, learning more about different careers from guest speakers, and we're going to visit some businesses. We learn about social and self-advocacy skills that facilitate communication in the workplace. We're also going to tour Sinclair Community College. They have a brand new program. Well, not brand new. It's year three of Tartan's Tops. And then we do some training with how to use the RTA bus. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Dayton area of public transportation, it is RTA. But we also spent some time talking about the Paratransit Connect experience, too. And also, while we're in camp, we also gain volunteer work experience. Camp this year is going to be held at St. John's United Church of Christ, downtown Dayton. So we're going to be doing some cleaning areas and volunteering some things within the food bank within the church so that some of the students can get some experience. So first of all, hopefully when this is all approved, um, I'm going to get this rolled out, this information, and there's going to be an application process. And we accept students from local high schools who reside in Montgomery County if they're eligible for board services or and or seeking eligibility um, during camp. This is a first come first serve basis. And also this camp is of no cost to anybody. You just need to have transport to and from the church and to bring a packed lunch. Typically on Fridays, we ride the bus, find pizza and have pizza downtown and um, just kind of have a good time learning what it's like to work in a fast food restaurant or the food industry. So it's always a good time with doing that. Also too, we have, I have somebody helping me out with camp and we typically spend our first day just kind of getting to know each other, talking about what we're doing for the week and making sure that everybody feels comfortable. Um, so it's a really great camp and we are very excited to be offering this again. Is any are there any in the chat box, Patty? No, I didn't see any in the chat box for um I was just looking through here. Um let's see. I did put your the website link in the chat box though. So if they wanted to take a closer look at it, they could. Okay, um, I'm gonna put my contact information. Um, like I said, everything just has to be approved before I can start rolling every as far as the application. And um, I'm hoping, hopefully by Friday, I will have something to get out to everybody. So it's a really popular camp. We have a great time, learn a lot of great um, things, what it's like to work in the work world, but we also have a good time too. Great, thank you very much. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. If you have any specific questions for Andrea or any of the previous speakers, please feel free to add them to the chat box. All right, and I believe she is on. Katie O'Leary, I made you co-host. There you go. Um, I did make you co-host. Um, 
did you need me to pull up your presentation or oh you're on mute sorry hi everyone that would be great if you could do that sure one second well you can start talking and why pull okay. it up <laughs> perfect um i'll go ahead and introduce myself my name is katie o'leary and i'm the founder and president of brighter connections theater um, i see carolyn's in here carolyn also works with us as well her son mark has done our program ever since we started back in 2013 so we've been around for quite a bit now about five years ago, we moved our camp um, to the University of Dayton, and we work directly with their theater department. We work with their um, the head of the theater department, Michelle Hayford, as well as several University of Dayton College fellows and other staff members. And the big picture of what we do is we are a theater program. So we are a theater program in the sense that we were kind of born out of what I saw as a need for individuals with disabilities in our community who um, didn't really have a chance to participate in quality theater as most of it was dominated by um, very intense audition processes and the idea that the most important aspect of the show was the final performance. So we kind of flipped all of that on its head and we decided that the most important part of theater is the actual process itself. And we also decided that we were not going to do anybody else's show. We were going to make our own show. So for the past um, 10 seasons, 11 seasons, every summer students come together and they actually create their own sketches. Um, and they do this through a variety of different ways, but also we do a lot of improv as well. And with all of that mixed in there, um, you know, that's a lot of our program, but also in between there, we do a lot of social skills as well. So how can we use theater to um, talk about um, making friends or how to handle a tough work situation, specifically the adult program? Um, maybe some people are interested in dating. How can we use theater and role play to kind of work through those scenarios um, that we might encounter? Um, yeah, so this is our slide here. I'm going to specifically focus on the adult program, but just so everyone knows, um, this does go as young as eight. We have a youth, um, young adult and adult program. Our adult program is new and kind of came from the fact that we were like, man, we're going to have some students graduating who've been with us forever and we really want to keep them around and we don't want to lose them just because they're 18. So the adult program was born last year and now you can be in it for forever. So um, we work for four weeks in the summer. This year we start on June 13th. Um, the adult program, excuse me, starts a week after that. So about June 20th. And they have performances on July 14th. You can go ahead and go to the next slide. Okay. <laughs> Just let me know. <laughs> I will. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Great. Um, so I really want to stress that for us, inclusive means all. Um, a big, you know, portion of our of our mission is that um inclusive theater um, is for everybody. And um, regardless of ability level, BCT is a home for everybody. I get a few parents every year who've never done it or have never seen a show. And they're always like, I don't know if my son or daughter is right for this, you know. Um, but trust me, they are welcome. We find a place for everyone to participate in their own way. So you can go to the next slide. Thank you. Um, Yes. So as I said, it is June 20th to July 14th. It'll run from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. I believe the adult program will be twice a week. And then the last week leading up, they'll have a few extra rehearsals for their tech week to better prepare themselves. Let me do the next slide. Um, this is how you can register. Uh, we're very, very proud that our registration costs are low. We have a lot of individual donors. Um, we have organizations that donate to us. The University of Dayton itself provides us a lot of funds. Our program is only $40 for the summer to do this program. Um, it is only $40 and you can register using this link. Or if you wanna find out more about us, we're also on Facebook. You can check out pictures on our website from past seasons and um, all the registration infos on there along with a calendar. And if you click it, it'll take you to a job form link and you can send that in. And that is how you register. I think that might have been my last slide, was it? Yeah. 
Okay. Did you want me to go back? I didn't click on your mission or your program. I think the first two I missed. If you could do the mission statement, I always love sure. to read that just because I think it's, it's just something really different in our community. But our mission is to create compelling theatrical experiences in an inclusive environment with neurodiverse young people, building life skills one act at a time. So um, we have a lot of different people that come to work with us. Obviously, we have the UD team whose background is mostly theater. Um, but my background is I'm a, um, a special ed teacher. I'm an intervention specialist. I work for Columbus City Schools now. Um, I'm in my eighth year. I've worked with all ages um, within there. Right now I'm in a K-2 setting. So the adult program is really fun for me in the summer to get something different in there. Uh, so we have a wide range of experiences as far as our team that's working. Um, and yeah, that's us. <laughs> Just, okay. And then this, this is also out there on the Google Salt Drive if you want to look again through this and get that link. Um, and this is located in Dayton. Um, now, how far is it open to anybody from any county or do they have to be just in the Montgomery County area? Anybody who um, is able to get there, how they get there is welcome to participate. Okay. And stop there here. All right. Does anybody have any questions for Katie O'Leary about their program? I think it looks like a great, it's a very diverse program. It looks like it's quite fun. It's different. It is a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. Um, I will say um, that they amaze me every year with what else what new things they manage to come up with so um I, I always like to really reiterate that there is a space for everybody in this show um because they are making the show so very good is there any other questions and then you know again it, with the diversity um and everything i know there's been questions about you know for someone in a you know wheelchair is there any any disability that's limited that for your program is there any limits um for those attending no there is not um the building itself is handicap accessible um i would say that what a common experience and actually i just had a parent email me about this last week was students who need close supervision so something common that we have had happen is families who have care providers um, will actually send their care provider into rehearsal with our cast participant. Um, and, and we treat them just as another cast member. We put them on our t-shirt. <laughs> um, you know, we put them in sketches and whatnot and things like that. Um, so if you have a care provider that you feel comfortable sending your child with and, um, and you feel like that's something that they would need in order to be successful, then we make those accommodations as well. Fantastic. All right. I'm just pulling some things up here real quick. Um, all right. So if there's no questions in the chat, that doesn't look like I just wanted to cover. Thank you, Katie, again for presenting. Um, and we put the salt Google or the Google Drive out there. If you guys want to see these presentations, we uploaded them. So I also wanted to go and show you one other booklet. It's also in it's also been uploaded, so you can reference it. But let me share my screen one one second. Um, I want my PDF one second. Here we go. So the su state support team um, ten puts out this summer camp and program directory. So now you can go through this. We uploaded this and you can look through it. I mean, I only get it. I only have a handful here tonight of camps that are out there. Um, there's a lot more out there, but this I'm trying to get real slow here, but um, here's a table of contents and you can look through. But this is something they put together um, of all the different camps that are in the area. This is one of them. Um, and it has if I go down here. It will have um, about searching for a camp. It has all that information. 
And then down here, here you go, helpful websites. So you'll be able to go through this um, and look about summer camps. Um, here's dis disability specific. Um, they have that in there. And then here's your residential camps. So you'll be able to go through here and look and see what applies, what you're interested in. Um, they have about, you know, the different camps in here, the ages, the weeks, um, the contact information. Um, so you should be able to find if you just trying to look for a camp, you can go and ask questions about, you know, looking at this going back through here. Um, so I want to make sure you guys are aware that that's out there. There's also another one. Now, this says 2022, but I thought um, it might be still as good as a reference, even though it says 2022. This one has um, the different camps here, the links again. Some of them might be duplicate, what's in the other book, but I thought this one also, you know, here's some from Cincinnati. Um, there's Newberry. I mean, there's a whole bunch of different areas in this one as well. So depending on where you're from, you might be able to find a camp. You know, there's Akron. You know, you might be able to find this. This is all out there. Um, I put um, in the, the Google Drive folder. So I want to make sure you guys had those things as a reference. Um, and then the one other reference I wanted to show you, I'm going to share my screen one more time. Um, you find it here. Here we go. So this is this is our live binder, um, and we end up putting everything that we talk about throughout the year, plus other thing, anything I can find, I put in this in here. But if you over here is your tabs, okay. And if you go down here, I do have one for camps, and in here you'll also find um, information. You'll see here's the state support. Also, there's the directory in there. There's one that's uh, possibilities for diverse abilities. This is really cool. It has a little, it's like a book, you know, which is really, and it has about, um, you'll have to look at it a little closer, but it has in here resources list guide and has all the different guides. So you can kind of get an idea who's offering what, you know, for specifics. Um, I have some other um I have the YMCA, there's a Camp Kern, Camp Camdelgard, um, and we have, you know, just the different ones that I've picked up over the course of, you know, this last couple of months, just trying to look for all this information. Um, there's down in Cincinnati, they have um, recreation activities, and I just added that out there. And then I also have the Opportunities for Ohioans with Disabilities in here. So I just wanted to make sure you guys all knew that this was out there. Um, I don't know, Michelle, can you put the live binder link in there um, as well? So I'm going to close up the recording. So if anybody has any questions, they can ask without typing if they want, and they can ask any of the presenters that are on, maybe anything specific um, they have regarding their camp. But I want to thank all the speakers for tonight. We had quite a lineup. Camps are. Um, they're fun, you know, it's something to look forward to. If your son or daughter get to go, um, some of them, you know, there's waivers, it looks like, and some of them, there might be a scholarship or something, you just have to ask. Um, but check out each of those websites, you know, see what the, what the presenters have left here and see what might fit your situation. But I wanna thank everybody for coming. And one second why I close the recording so we can open it up for further discussion. One second.